All right, what's up everybody? This is Don Ward, Third Creative, and this video is a deep dive into the all new multi-sport template Torn. Uh, Torn is extremely versatile, all sorts of customization options, all sorts of color combinations and pattern options and combinations. Um, but in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing, start to finish. I'm gonna show you how to customize everything, all the options, maybe some things that uh, you may not have discovered or, or noticed otherwise, and uh, really just help you get the most out of this thing and, and ultimately make some money with it. So uh, let's jump right into it. First thing that I wanna talk about is just a couple changes to my bundle option. Um, this is something new that I've done with this uh, bundle and I plan to go back and um, add these additional files to some of the previous uh, bundles that I have but with this one um, you're gonna get all the normal files that you're used to which is your 4x5 and 2x3 vertical and horizontal um, your memory mate and your 1x3 panoramic but um, I've got a lot of requests for all sorts of things but the two things that I get the most requests for uh, one is a one by two option so I have implemented or added a one by two uh, vertical and a one by two horizontal file um, I think this is really for you uh, those of you out there um, who do the one by two banners so hopefully this will help and save you a little bit of time but the biggest one is the button file I've added a button file um, make it easier you don't have to um, try to rearrange everything yourself and hopefully that'll be a time saver as well um, so let's look at this graphic real quick this is just something I whipped together to kind of show you what we're looking at I've added some some bleed guides and some cutoff guides and um, we'll talk about this in depth and walk you through it um, a little more in detail at the end of this video um, Next graphic I have here, I talked about patterns. Um, there are 10 patterns that I've uh, added to this file, 10 options. So you can control everything about them. You can scale them up, you can scale them down, you can rotate them at angles. Um, each pattern um, gives you two color options. So as you can see here, you can change the foreground color, the background color, um, any combination you want. Um, you can go with the drastic kind of like we have here this white and a dark green or you can keep it you know very subtle and similar like we have here in the middle with this uh, two shades of purple or pink and purple um, but anyways you get the idea uh, so let's jump into this thing um, as always I like to start at the bottom we'll open up this background folder and uh, I'm just going to walk you through step by step what each uh, what each of these layers is, what what it does, and how to use it. Um, so very bottom, it says left side background change color. So it's referring to the left side over here, and it is the background. So it's where we're getting this uh, this black color or dark gray. So. If you double click color overlay, it'll pull up this box. You can click in here, you can change that to anything you want. Now I do have a gradient overlay options. So if you want to turn that color lay color overlay off and turn the gradient overlay, you can get a little bit of a different look. Um, but it's an option. So most of you probably want to keep it on a solid color, so it's set to that by default. Um, up here in this folder, it says left side pattern options change color. So I've set it up for this pattern to change the color on the folder itself. So same thing as the layer below. Double click here and you can control the color of the pattern overlay. Now, if you want to choose a different pattern, this one by default is kind of a, a parquet look. Um, open this up and you can just go through them. We'll turn that off and we'll just kind of look at each one. We've got this hexagon pattern um, and I mentioned that you can scale it up and scale it down. So with your move tool selected, 
let's say you wanted this smaller. It's pretty big. You can see the boundaries way over here, way over here. And if I scale down, you can see exactly how big it is. So if you want to play with it, click on a corner here. You can drag it down. You can make it pretty small, depending on the look that you want. You can also rotate it at an angle and position it. Um, scale it up but you get the idea so the same thing applies to all of these layers if you want to change the rotation or the scale you can scale them up scale them down um, I'm gonna cancel that to keep it um, while we're talking about all of these uh, pattern options I want to touch on one thing the file uh, you know it's about a it's about a almost a gig here but the working file is 4.2 gigs that's pretty high so once you make your selections with your patterns it may be helpful to go in and delete highlight and delete all the patterns that you're not going to use it'll make the file smaller and uh, make it uh, move a little quicker of course if you do that well even if you don't you always want to as soon as you open it you want to save it under a new file name so you keep your master files and you don't lose anything um, but just a little tip let's keep going and look at these other uh, patterns here you've got your vertical lines you've got your circle pattern your diagonal lines your circle I call it circle corners but uh, honeycomb triangles You've got your zigzag and your swirl. So hopefully all of that makes sense. Now with a, a swirl one, let's look at it. It's a little different because it's not the same all over. So you can move this around to get different different looks. And again, you can scale it up a little bit or down if you want to. But you can position this however. Um, you have to scale it up in order for it to fit here. But uh, you get the idea. So that is how we control the, uh, the patterns over here on the left side. I'm going to try to get it back to its original state here. Let's collapse that. All right, next we have our paper texture change color. So let's zoom in a little bit. I had it zoomed out. This background here, you can see my cursor, kind of a paper texture. And we can change the color of that here so play around with it we've got reds here so one thing you might notice I went with this red and then all of a the sudden these uh, ink splatters look a lot darker so let's leave it red for a second and take a look at this folder just above it I've got these ink splatters in here and it looks good the way I have it on white, but it's a little bold if you go with the color. So if you run into that, my suggestion or option is just to go with this selected, go up here to opacity and just draw that down. Maybe not to 6%. Let's see. You can play with it to a level that you think looks good. So in this case, we might go around 50% or maybe I'll just punch in. 40, maybe around 40. Um, but that's how you can control that. So let's go back. All right. So that's our ink splatter folder, and that's our paper texture. You can change the color there. Um, you can play with the levels if you want, but primarily just this color here is what you're looking to uh, to use. All right, so next we have our vertical line pattern, and it says change color. So if you look over here, we've got this vertical line, and it is a triangle pattern. You can change the color by clicking on this color overlay. Same thing. Play with it. Um, but if you open this up, you've got a few more options. Wanted to give you a few options to choose from. So by default, it's set to triangles. We'll turn that off. You can go with the uh, X, repeating X pattern. Uh, I also put a kind of a plus, if I get it to stay on, 
plus symbol here. You can see we've got this plus pattern. And then I just did the circular dots. So just a few options. You can scale them up, scale them down, just like we did with the pattern before. Um, but primarily what you're looking for is to just pick which one you want and use this color overlay. And that is everything within this background folder. So the next folder that we have is this torn paper section behind subject. Sometimes I struggle with what to name these, but uh, basically describing this torn um, paper layer that you will have right behind your subject image. So let's open it up. It's broken up into uh, two sections. Let's go to the bottom, paper texture and pattern overlays, and let's open up that bottom subfolder. So here you have all of the same patterns that I walked you through um, that were on this left hand side. So by default this one is set to the swirl, but you can change it to any of these and you can scale them, rotate them just like you did on the other one. Um, on this one, um, I had to, uh, for good reasons, I had to add the color overlay to each exact one. Um, so rather than controlling it on the actual folder, you'll select which pattern you want and click on the color overlay to adjust the color that you want. And that is because um, it is clipped to this paper texture, um, which is actually this whole shape here. So in the foreground, if you want to change the color, you would do that here, which I'll kind of show you an example. Keep going with this red, you get the idea. Um, and then for the overlaying pattern, pick which one and use the color overlay that's attached to that. Uh, so that's how you control the colors for this torn piece of paper here. Next we have uh, small pattern overlay change color. Now this small pattern overlay, you can see this wrap around box here. This is what it's referring to. And if I zoom in, it's just plus symbol patterns. So this is optional. It's not always going to be a good idea to use this, depending on if you have a very bold, con bright contrast uh, background pattern, this may not show up very well. In this case, because the background is uh, kind of a dark gray and then an almost black and it's not very contrasty. I was able to make this a much lighter color where you can see it. It's just a, a little accent, a little extra, um, but it is a plus pattern. Um, the other options is the uh, diagonal line box that you can also see up here. Um, you can make these bigger or smaller, scale them up, scale them down, move them around. Um, the third option is uh, similar to the first. It's just X's rather than plus symbols. And you change the color with this uh, color overlay that's on the folder. Very simple, but you don't have to have it. You can always turn it off if it doesn't fit what you're, uh, what you're creating, if it, doesn't, uh, if it doesn't look right, which is a possibility extra option. Let's move up here to the upper text layers and open this thing up. So um, actually before we open it up, let's actually zoom in a little bit and look at this. So if you want all of these colors to be the same, all you have to do is click on this color overlay that is attached to the actual folder and you can change it all at once. Um, cancel out of that. Um, but you will need to open up the folder um, to customize your text and to move things around. So I want to kind of show you how I do this. Um, let's go to team name and let's just say that it is um, Tigers. All right, so it automatically um, will go from right to left to try to keep it even, you know, with this box in this year. Um, now your sport name is the same thing. Let's change it to basketball. Now, if you like the look where basketball is longer than the team name Tigers, you can leave it as it is. Um, but if you remember right, I had volleyball and WF Elite. I had them kind of even on the left and the right. 
So if you want to achieve that, I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, there's a few ways you can do it. Um, with the sport name, um, one thing you could do on your character uh, panel, you could use your kerneling and make that smaller. If I drop it to 500, it'll bring it in and you can find exactly you know where it will line up just right. Um, but if we don't use kerneling to bring that in, um, another option is to scale it down. I'm going to do this quickly. It may not be exactly per precise, but get it close to being even with the edges. Okay, so let's say we've got it even with the edges of your team name. I'm going to bring this up so that it's not so far away. Let's say it's right there. Now, if you hold down shift and you um, highlight both sport name and team name, now you can click on the corner and you can start to drag down so that the bottom subtext where it says basketball is even with this box over here. Now you can zoom in and fine tune it, but we don't need to get into all that detail. I just wanted to uh, demonstrate how you can arrange this depending on the look that you want. So if you want your subtext to be even with your primary team name text, those are your two options to do that. But if you are perfectly okay with it being um, staggered or not, not even like this, then um, that's an option for you as well. So let's back up and get things how they originally were. So your year, very simple. If uh, it's 2022, you can change it now. Same thing, that no longer lines up. So probably rather than making that smaller, what I would do is change the cur kerneling. I'll try 550 close. You can play around with it, maybe 575. You get the idea, but you can change it, try to keep everything even with this box. Of course, this box can be made bigger or smaller. Um, and you can change the color of the box with this color overlay. So if you wanted a contrasting color, you know, to everything else, actually, what happened? Oh, it's because we have this, this color overlay. So yeah, if you want to control the color separately, you'll need to turn this one off for this folder and then with all of the text you can control it right here in the character panel or if you double click in here up here you've got this so you can you can control it that way um, but again if you want it all the same just turn that on for the uh, upper text layers primary folder and you're good to go now you can scale the whole thing if you want you want it bigger scale it up you can position it however you want that is the gist of it. All right, next we have our subject image folder. And there is a layer mask. So if I come up here and turn this off, I've got it where this layer mask masks out the lower uh, portion of the subject evenly with the paper uh, layer behind it. Um, you can turn that off if you want their legs to go all the way down. That may be a look that you want. Now, to turn it off, I just held shift and clicked on it, but you can also right-click, disable layer mask. Right-click, enable layer mask. Excuse me. Um, it has a built-in drop shadow, um, which is very subtle here because the background is as dark as it is, but you can kind of see it under the ball. It is adjustable, so you can open that up and play with the distance, size, opacity, direction, um, all of that good stuff. Uh, but this is where you will drop your subject images, right in here. Um, scale them, position them. Um, I have this, um, this is something I've been adding to my last several templates and it kind of throws people for a loop a little bit. This is a hue slash saturation adjustment layer. I have it set up, if you open it up, everything is even, but if you go to the blues, I've got the blues all the way down. And the reason for that is basically because it looks better. Um, it has to do with your white balance, but if I turn it off, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of blue um, tint to the white. 
And although it doesn't look terrible, I feel that if there's no blue in the uniform, this is something that I do that just makes it blend with the background. Now it matches. You know, you could always go and add a little hint of blue to the white background, but that's not really their colors. Um, or if you're just awesome and you perfectly nail your white balance in the first place and you don't have blue, no big deal. Um, so you can turn that off if you don't want to use it or if you have uniforms that have blue in them, obviously it's not going to work. But you can also use this, let's say you wanted to boost um, the yellows um, or if you wanted to boost the overall saturation. Um, you can come up here to master and you can boost the saturation get a little more vivid look or if you want a little more desaturated you can do that now this has this layer mask on here um, and that's because I didn't want to desaturate above the head you can adjust that if you use your gradient tool and you're on your mask here you can control now I click I hold shift I click and I drag up and it creates now I did the opposite so I would need to click and drag down um, but you get the idea but if you want to turn that portion off you can and then everything just applies as a whole so you can boost or desaturate might be going a little too in depth but I just want to make sure everybody understands how this thing works what it's for when to use it when not to use it you get the idea um, so if you don't want it you just turn it off and uh, you're good to go. I'm going to turn it back on and we're going to look at the last folder here. This is the lower name, I'm calling it a name plate, but it's these layers here. You've got this uh, layer that kind of like a torn crumpled piece of paper and this one below it is also the same. You can't quite tell because it's a darker shade of gray, almost black, so you you don't necessarily see all the texture, but it's there. Let's open it up um, at the very top we've got our name text layers change color so if we turn it off you can see the name and the layers and so it's actually uh, the name as well as this little box here you can control the colors um, by clicking on this color overlay that's on the folder and it applies universally to those three layers um, just like with the the text at the top of the design you can open this up and you can turn this off you can change the color here in the character for the first name and the last name and also um, this diagonal line box and um, it is set where it'll go from left to right so if her name was Danielle you could change it to Danielle um, we won't do that now you've got a lot of extra room for your name but some people have really long names. In the event that you need to change that, you can come down here to this red layer here. And this is the text background shape. Make sure you're using your move tool. Um, click on one of these um, anchor points. I hold down shift and it allows you to stretch this thing out. So you could stretch it out to be longer. You can bring it in to be shorter. Um, same thing on the top. If you hold down shift, you can click and drag up, down, and you can adjust it if you need to. It's there. Uh, let's see what else. We'll collapse that. Um, paper texture. So this layer here is where you get the texture and it's also where you can control the color. So you click color overlay and you can make this any color that you like. Uh, what else? All right, so down here we've got subtext, and so that's referring to this text here. It could say anything. It could say the sport. It could say their class, or if it's a senior, junior, et cetera. It could say their position. Um, anything you need it to say, it can say. Um, of course, you can change the color in your character panel. Uh, very simple. Um, this is also a place you might, depending on what you put in here, if you put in senior, wow, did I really type senior up there? That's not what I meant to do. Let's double click here. Now let's change it to senior. 
if I can spell. All right, well, that doesn't take up hardly any space at all, and that looks kind of weird. So I would come up here to my kerneling, and I'd, I'd make this a pretty high number. Let's see what 2,000 looks like. Yeah, that looks a little better. You could probably even go to 2,500 and really stretch it out. Um, you can go back to 2,000, yeah, and you could scale it up if you want to. But that's how you can fill that space. Um, now, another option, just like this top layer, you can come down here to this subtext background shape, hold down shift, or click anchor point, hold down shift, now click and drag in and out. Um, if you want to move everything, you can highlight all three of these layers. And you can re, well, if I can get it to cooperate, yeah, you can scale it down, scale it up, you can move it around. All kinds of options there. What else do we have? That's it. Um, really, the only other thing uh, is I want to talk about the memory mate, how you do that. And then we'll talk about the button, and then uh, we'll be all done. So let's hop over to the memory mate real quick. All right, so here we have our memory mate. Um, there's really a few ways that you could go about this, but I created its own separate file, hopefully to make it a little easier for you. Um, the way that I like to do it is I like to build my team image first. Um, so you'll see we have the team image over here. It's scaled down and positioned to the side so that we have room to make it a memory mate. But if you start off with your 4x5 file and you build your team, get it customized, um, you've got your final product here. Um, what you'll want to do is come in here to the layers and turn off a few of these. We'll turn off the background and we're going to turn off uh, the lower nameplate. And so we want it to look like this. Once we have it looking like this, we're going to want to save this thing. So we'll go to File, Save As, and we're going to want to save it as a PNG. And by saving it as a PNG, it will allow you to preserve this transparency here. And that's important, uh, which you'll see here in a second. If you've done any of my other memory mates, you're probably already familiar with this. But let's let's just give it a name. Mm. Anything is fine. Now we're going to hit save. <clears throat> now I'm going to choose smallest file because I don't want the file to be big. It takes a little bit longer to save um, doing it this way, but. Uh, I don't mind. Okay, so once it saves, you can open up the actual memory mate file, which is what we see here. So all of the layers in this uh, design pretty much set up the same way as far as customization. But um, what you'll want to do is come to this um, second to last folder. It says place team PNG here, see video. Well, this is the video we open this up we've got our memory mate file in here so let's delete that since you wouldn't be using it all right so now we need to go grab that uh, PNG file that we made okay so your PNG has saved and now you're ready to insert it into the memory mate file so I have the PNG here, and all I'm going to do is drag and drop it. Now it's automatically going to make it fit the entire canvas. Um, I think what I want to do, I'll go ahead and accept that. I'm going to actually put it in the folder it belongs to. Now I'm going to click on the corner here, click and again, and just drag inward to scale it. Now I'm going to position it. So I may have made it a little too small. We can bring it up a little bit. Get it how you like it. Once you do, hit commit, and it's in there. And so now, you know, you would customize everything else the same way you did. Now you will insert your um, subject images into this folder here. And 
everything else pretty much the same and you're good to go so that is the memory mate last thing to look at is the button and that'll be a wrap so let's take a look at that button file all right so we have our button file open and there's not a whole lot to cover on here it's pretty simple pretty self-explanatory um, the customization options are all the same as the vertical um, that's pretty straightforward uh, really what I want to talk about is these bleed guides you can I've got it labeled red that's because you want to turn it off before you save your image so if you turn it off you can see what it looks like it's a one by one so you might this might actually be helpful if you're doing anything for you know Instagram or anything like that uh, but primarily it is for buttons so if you turn this on you've got your cutoff guide which is this outer circle and then you've got we'll open it up so you've got your cutoff guide turn that off and you've got your bleed guide your bleed guide is pretty much what you really want to focus on because anything um, outside of this circle is likely to get lost or wrap around the edge and not not seen so you want to keep everything positioned in here um, but it's just a guide that helps you um, know uh, what will be visible and what will not so once you've got everything done you just turn this off and you save it as an image to be used for a button and it's worked like a charm for me very simple very straightforward so that's uh, that's all I got um, hopefully that answers any questions that uh, might have come up and maybe even uh, you know showing you something that you may not have uh, discovered on your own um, but of course if there's any questions or anything you run into with this thing just reach out to me uh, you can go to the website thirdcreative.com shoot me an email don at thirdcreative.com or you can uh, DM me through any of the uh, social medias. I'm always happy to, to help out if you need it. So that's all I got. That's a wrap. Um, until next time, see ya.